In this video, uh, as part of the Digital Logic series, what we're going to do is we're going to try to kind of paint a very high level, very high level view of transistors to computers. Each one of these topics that we're going to cover here um, or introduce here is full course on their own and full field on their own. So there's no attempt of being comprehensive, covering all possibilities in this case. And just trying to introduce some very uh, fundamental but high level concept relating to trans from how do you get from a transistor to a computer system. So let's go ahead and start with the basic concept that in this uh, world we are looking at, in this video, we are looking at the digital systems. And uh, digital system by their very nature are built around representing number, uh, the digital design systems, um, or digital logic systems actually would be a better term here. Uh, so um, <clears throat> at their core is a system that allows us to represent numbers. Uh, because of the way the technology has evolved and the fact that we are able to build devices that are able to either be open or closed, like a switch, uh, very inexpensively, all of these devices have evolved in a using binary numbering system. Okay, So at its simplest form, a single digit of binary is one bit and this bit can either take a value of one or zero. In earlier um, video we discussed how a voltage is used to represent one and zero and what voltage would be a one, what voltage would be a zero. So if you accept that um, binary is the fundamental system we're using, it's one bit and one bit is referred to one digit of binary, one uh, number uh, one unit and then it's either one or it's zero now we can move on and really talk about how how do we um, start from here so uh, one of the fundamental devices that we're using these days we're calling transistor okay and the one I'm going to start with is actually the first one that was used in in this field and it's called the uh, one form of it. These are called bipolar junction uh, transistors, or it's more commonly referred to by it, how they're built. They could be either NPN or there is a PNP and all that. But for now, let's just take a look at these. And these devices, these transistors, really revolutionized. We have known about logic, we've known about how to deal with binary for centuries. And we've actually used switches in some cases to build devices that allow us to do computation more quickly even before the transistor. Then we got uh, vacuum tubes. There still was a little cumbersome and big for what we wanted to do. Then all of a sudden, once the semiconductor come about and we were able to use the concept of uh, multi-layer um, a semiconductor to build transistors, which is a fancy way of saying a switch. Although transistor can do many things, in this particular case, we're going to treat them as if they're a switch. One of the simplest and the easiest to describe is this NPN transistor. It's one of the very first ones actually was uh, implemented, although the concept, the physical phenomena was known for some time. It wasn't until around the 1947 in Bell Lab with an individual by the name of Schottky who worked on coming up with this structure and made it made it operational. So typically this NPN transistor is represented much like what I've drawn here. They have a name they call uh, one this this branch uh, represented with C which stands for collector. Um, if you want to think about it, collects electrons, if you want to think about it that way. And this is called emitter, as the name implies. This is the one that kind of gets rid of it, if you will, uh, emits it, um, and is represented with E. And this represents it. And the base is represented with B. And, and typically what, what this transistor is, is if I, were, if, if I were to apply a small current, 
or active apply, no current here. So we don't have any voltage drop from here. This voltage drop is called VBE. Then zero. Then, then the current that will flow in here is almost no non-existence. Or in other word, it's open if that is equal to zero. So there's no current here. Then there's no current going up and down. So now if I come back, <clears throat> I'm going to use a blue color. Now if I, if I were to add a voltage here, some voltage larger than typically for this device is 0.7 volts, then what's going to happen is I'm going to have some current flowing, some small current flowing in here, which means that um, the current here, instead of being zero, is going to be larger than zero, or is going to have, I'm going to have a closed, closed switch. So that's basically what a transistor is. You put a small amount of voltage across the base and the emitter, and you close the switch. You remove that voltage, or you don't put it there, and it's open. How is it physically designed? I usually think of this as a cheese sandwich, but in reality, that's of course not how it's made. But that's one way of thinking about it. Let's say, let's say if I had some n-type material, n-type simply means it's got more electron than it has holes. And then I have another set of material is p-type. I'm sorry, n-type here as well, just in the same color. And then let's go ahead and use red to represent the p-type. Then I have a p-type layer in here. Okay. So this is a typical um, transistor. And uh, so <clears throat> to, to connect, connect it back to the picture we have there, this piece is the base, this piece would be the collector, and this piece would be emitter. As I've drawn it, you can almost see that the emitter and collector literally can be swapped around, and it could in some cases. So that's basically how we build it. Now the beauty is that these, these devices, these, these transistors nowadays, using different technology, we nowadays use MOS technology, um, uh, metal oxide trans, uh, uh, semiconductor, uh, and then and then we use them in a complementary mode. So you may have heard the word CMOS, which stands for complementary MOS, and these devices are usually drawn a little bit differently, but this the behavior is the same. Uh, the gate, literally, you can think of it as the base, the source, you can kind of think about it as the um, uh, collector and the a drain, you can kind of think of it as the emitter. And um, there are many varieties of these. These are field effect transistors and we use uh, my metal oxide. And the CMOS specifically is a technology and a way of putting them together. And the huge, huge value of CMOS is that it um, uses almost minimal power is used when not switching. So as long as its value is not changing, as well as long as the gate is not changing high and low, or putting voltage across the green and um, drain, um, then it doesn't use any power or any current. So that's that's the low power is really the thing, and that's why we use these a lot more these days uh, than the bipolar um, uh, type. Now, of course, there are there are lots of variety of these. As I said, NPN is one. You can actually reverse the order of these things that have a PNP in here, um, and each one has its own advantages, its own disadvantages. The only thing we want you to take away from this point is that the transistor, transistor, the way it's used in digital logic, is a switch, and that's its goal in life. Now, once I have a transistor, the next level of complexity I can create is called gates. Okay, one of the simplest gates we have is what we call an inverter. Most of you have seen this before, and its job is to basically take whatever logic you put in here, and let's say if A is one here, we're gonna have A prime. Uh, by the way, this is a knot, sometimes this way, sometimes we draw it this way. Both of this means A is inverted, and here's gonna be zero. If you put a zero in here, you're gonna get a one. So that's the simplest gate we have. Now the question is how do you build this out of a transistor. So if you simply think about it for a minute, see if you can um, 
figure this out or not. Um, you can put this on a pause till you figure it out, or if you just want to see me work it, I can go ahead and do that. Uh, that's what I'm about to do. So what's going to happen is that if I use my transistor I just described, and I put A in here, and this is my transistor, okay? And if I connect this to a 5 volt, and let's say we have a 1K or some level of resistor here, unimportant how big, or not too big, hopefully. And then I have an A, I will have an A prime coming in here, because look at this. If I have zero volt in here, that means there's no voltage drop across this, which means this is a open. If it's open, this is directly connected to five volt, so that is equal to one. On the other hand, if I come in here, and I will put a one in here, which is five volts, remember logic one is five volts, then I've got a voltage drop here, which means this is closed, which in turns means this is going to be zero. Voila, I've got an inverter. And I've got a uh, knot or an invert inverter. And so the challenge to you would be, can you use the same thing, same, log same way of doing this to build an AND gate or an OR gate? So the next level, so let's say, let's say we build a gate, then we can use gates to build much more complex devices. Um, Sometimes the, 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 these devices are usually um, um, categorized based on the size. For example, uh, you can buy gates in a, in a device, and these devices are usually, well, not very creative either. So usually this is reversed, referred to as a small scale integrated circuit. Then, of course, we'll have a medium scale integrated circle circuits. These are things we refer to as like PALs, um, small memories, adders, things of that nature. And those these things usually range from 1,000 to about 100,000 gates in them. Um, the next level would be what we call typically large scale integration. Um, these will have somewhere between 100,000 to about a million gates in them. And these are kind of complex. They can implement more complex functionality. Most of the processors and things like that we use these days are called VLSIs, which stands for Very Large Scale Integrated Circuits. That's how they categorize them. And these things, of course, will have anywhere from a million to billions to 20, 30 billions or more uh, gates in them. And these things um, are typically have extensive, I mean, like your chip and your processors, whether it's Apple or uh, Microsoft based, uh, they all gonna have uh, that multiple billions of chip uh, gates in them or transistors in them. Okay, um, uh, typically, um, uh, that's that's kind of the categorization we have for different scales. So this was giving you a little bit of a idea of what a transistor is, which is really the fundamental component, the core component in uh, designing computer systems, because all of our computer systems are not a binary system. And then uh, we can use transistors to build gates. We can use gates to build medium scale integration devices, large scale, and of course, VLSI, eventually the largest devices we have, uh, which your processors in your computers are all VLSI devices. That brings us to end of um, transistor to computer um, overview.